Good morning. So yesterday we learned the Gemara that tells us the origins of Kairach. That is the uh, sandwich we eat at the Seder of Matzah and Mara together. And today we're going to look at the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, the Shulchan Aruch mm -hmm. of uh, the Alter Rebbe, chapter Tov Ein Hei 475, in which he discusses the halachas of Kairach, the sandwich. So it's halacha number 15 in the packet you have. Uh, chapter 475, you'll see halacha 15. You're looking at the footnotes, you got to go back. As well, so yeah. correction, Rabbi Gimbal pointed out yesterday, we mentioned that Hillel said, Mishmad de Gemara, the name of tradition, that a person should, uh, what was the tradition he had? That in post-temple times, when Mara is rabbinic, one should mix Matzah and Mara together. Now, I assumed that it was Hillel the elder who lived in the times of the temple, and Rabbi Gimbal pointed out that it's incorrect. The Ran states that it's Hillel of the mission of the Amoraic era, which is many generations later. Okay, so he's saying not to mix matzah and mara together because the mara flavor uh, overpowers the matzah flavor. Okay, just a little correction. Why do they call it Korach? You're supposed to liberate, liberate his name. There are different spellings. Korach of the Torah. Is kuf reish ches, Kairach, which means a sandwich. Actually, Kairach means to wrap. Is kuf reish vav chaf, different trend, different different uh, spelling, also different pronunciation. The <laughs> the name Kairach is Kairach, the patach under the reish, and Kairach to wrap is Kairach, with the So It's actually different words. They sound similar. <laughs> They're different words completely. Okay. Okay. Hello, hello, number 15. And we're going to see the Alter Rebbe is going to give us a very beautiful summary of the Gemara yesterday, along with uh, incorporating some of the commentaries that come after the Gemara as well. And then I'm going to give us the final conclusion about how we do our Seder, which the Gemara told us. The Gemara said you have matzah, murr, and then the sandwich. And the Alter Rebbe is going to give us the whole background my summary of um, why that is. Let's begin. Halacha 15. You see it? Okay. Mitzvah smarar. The mitzvah marar. Min I don't know why the words came out so small. I'm sorry. Mitzvah smarar min The mitzvah of eating marar. Biblically speaking, Enoi Ella is only relevant is man cha Pesach nechal at the time when the Pesach offering is eaten. Otherwise, it's not biblical. Because Shinema, as the Pasuk says, Al matzos, you shall eat it, the Pesach offering, together with matzah and marar. So the only time the Torah tells you to eat marar is along with the Pesach offering. Which means, from the Torah's perspective, the whole mitzvah of mar marar is only when you're eating a Pesach offering. The carbon Pesach, the Pesach offering. Aval ba bisman hazeh nowadays, where we have no carbon Pesach, we don't have a Pesach offering. It is only a rabbinic mitzvah shetiknu that our sages established zechel mikdash to remember the mikdash, to remember the base of mikdash. Right, there's a lot of things we do to remember what used to be in the time of the base of mikdash. Yeah, we learned uh, last earlier this week. We have the two cooked food items to remember what was in the Bissam Mikdash. Okay, those two cooked food items are custom. They're not a rabbinic ordinance, not a rabbinic instruction. But the eating of the Mara is a rabbinic instruction to remember the mitzvah of Mara that used to be when they ate the Pesach offering. So that's as far as Mara goes. Mara is rabbinic today. Avabat. Eating matzah on the first night of Pesach, even nowadays, who minatayda is biblical. Shenemark, as the Pasuk says, in the evening of the first night of Pesach, you should eat matzahs. 
below Husker Shom Pesach. And there's no mention of Pesach here. Okay, so let's understand. The Pesach offering has to be eaten with matzah and marah. Now, in addition, the Torah says, eat matzah, independent of Pesach, which means in temple times, you would eat matzah twice. Once you would eat it to fulfill the mitzvah of eating matzah, the same way we do today, and then you eat it again together with your Pesach offering and the marah in order to fulfill the mitzvah of Pesach, carbon Pesach, eating of the Pesach offering, which the Torah instructs has to be eaten with matzah and marah, so you got to eat matzah again. Which means, therefore, we are left with the biblical mitzvah, the mitzvah in to eat matzah, because it's independent of carbon Pesach. But then the other matzah and the maror, which is meant to eat, eat with the carbon Pesach, we don't have. So we have maror only menachachamim from the Rabbanon, from the sages. Clear? Okay. The fichot, therefore, continues halacha 16, tezayim. Im karach, here's that word. Karach, you see, it's a kafresh chaf. If he wrapped, Karach Adam Kazais Matzah. If a person took the olive sized portion of matzah, it means the right amount of matzah, Ukizais Marar and an olive sized portion of Marar, so he took the right amount of matzah and the right amount of Marar, Ullah San Yachat, and he chewed them together. So he took matzah and Marar and chewed them together. Va'achlam is and he ate it nowadays when there's no Beit HaMikdash. Loi Yotza Yedei Chevasai. He has not fulfilled his obligation. If he only did a rap, why? Shamarar, because the marar, which is a rabbinic ordinance, a rabbinic instruction, mevatel, it cancels out, it nullifies as tam ha the flavor of the matzah, shum which is biblical. So if all you did was ate the sandwich, you didn't do a mitzvah. The marar you didn't do, no, sorry, um, you didn't do the matzah mitzvah. Because the marar flavor overpowered the matzah flavor. So if all you ate was a sandwich, no mitzvah of matzah. Okay. Avo but, okay, so now we know for sure we have to have matzah and marar separately. Good. Avo but, bizman she basin mikdash kayom, when the basin mikdash was standing, shamarar who gam came in atayra, where when the basin mikdash was standing, eating the marar was biblical. You fulfill your obligation for matzah and marar, which means what I said before is not true. I said before that in the temple times you would eat matzah once. And then again with the Pesach offering, maybe you'll do that, but you don't have to. Because the Pesach is biblical and the matzah is biblical and the marar is biblical when you're talking in the temple times, then you could eat all together. Why? Because biblical mitzvahs they don't cancel each other out. Why? Because they're all equally obligated on you. They're equal. How they equal? They're all fulfilling Hashem's command. So Hashem commands you to eat three things. Okay, so eat them all together. But if Hashem commands you to eat one thing, but the sages tell you to eat something else, and you eat them together, then you're taking the sages' flavor the mother flavor, and overpowering Hashem's flavor, the matzah, can't do that. So when you have the temple and you're making a carbon Pesach, then the mother is, is biblical, the Pesach is biblical, the matzah is biblical, you can eat them all together. That's all Hashem's command. But to today, where the mother is Rabbanon, because you don't have a carbon Pesach, and the matzah is, the is biblical, then you cannot, it's inappropriate, to take the matzah flavor of the, the murder flavor, which is only rabbinic, and overpower Hashem's command of the matzah. Well, look, okay. Well, moreover, so in the Pesach Mikdash times, if you wanted to eat matzah, murder, Pesach together, no problem. But more. In the opinion of Hillel the Elder, the first Hillel, a person will not fulfill his biblical commandment. Hillel says, you want to fulfill the mitzvah, you have to eat all three together. You have to have the right portion of Pesach offering, Pesach 
carbon Pesach, the right amount of matzah, the right amount of maror, because I is all of size each, but put them together, but oichlan yachet, eat them all together. Makayim mashanemar, to fulfill that which the Pasuk says, al matzah simarevim yechluhu, you have to eat the carbon Pesach together with matzah and maror. Okay, so what do we have so far? Nowadays, you're not allowed to mix matzah and maror, because maror is rabbinic, matzah is biblical, you can't do that. Temple times, two opinions. If you want to mix, mix. Opinion number two, which is Hillel. No, you have to mix. You have to eat them all together. Now let's continue Allah Zion. Yud Zion, 17. You have it clear so far? It's the next page. Be clear so far? Okay. Now the app is man Even nowadays, Shamor or Ene Elomid Soifrim. That Morar is only a rabbinic mitzvah. It's, it's from the Chachamim. Umatza and matza, himenatoida is biblical. And, and we just learned. And therefore, if you mix, if you wrap together the matza and the maror, and you ate them together, you will not fulfill your obligation. Even according to Hillel, even Hillel, who in the times of the base of Mikdash, in the times when he had the Korban Pesach, said, you have to eat all three together. Today, when there's no Korban Pesach, he would say, eat them separate. Because the mora, which is bitter, overpowers the flavor of the matzah. If so, you got to eat the right amount of matzah alone. The loy mora without mora, lots of yaday chayvus matzah minatayra. In order to fulfill the biblical mitzvah of eating matzah without ruining the flavor with mora. Number one, we come up nonetheless. Any yaday chayvus mora. You will not fulfill the obligation of eating marar, the rabbinic mitzvah of marar, lefi das hillel, according to hillel, elem came only if noitel oit kazayis matzah, you take another bit of matzah, the karachan im kazayis marar, and you put it together with your marar, oit l'nyacha, eat it together. Share, because marar, bizman hazeh, marar nowadays, tiknu chachamim, our sages say, did it? Why did they tell us to eat marar nowadays? Zeichel and Mikdash to remember how they used to do it in the base of Mikdash time when they had marar biblical. Shaya oz chiv when then it was biblical. Uviz man she base of Mikdash kayom, and when the base of Mikdash is standing, ain't the edoitzi zeichel vas marar minatayra lofi das hillel elim kain karchan matzah. According to Hillel, when the base of Mikdash is standing, the only way to fulfill the mitzvah of marar is if you eat it together with matzah in the base of Mikdash time. So if you want to eat mora now to remember the way it was by the base makers time, how do you have to eat your mora? If you want to remember, according to Hillel, if you want to remember it the way it was then, how would you have to eat it? With matzah. So you have to eat matzah again. Right? So you have to eat one matzah mm -hmm. for the biblical mitzvah. Another mora you got to eat to do the rabbinic one. But what's the rabbinic mitzvah? The rabbinic mitzvah is to remember the mora eating that they had in the base makers time. So according to the other opinions, which said, if you want to mix, yes, in the business time, if you want to eat separate, no problem. So then to do the mitzvah of marar, you eat the marar the way they used to do it, which was separate. But according to Hillel, if you want to remember the way it was done in times, if you want to remember how it was, together. Oh, that's why nowadays you have to eat it also with, together. So according to Hillel, you have to eat one matzah for the biblical today. You have to eat one matzah for the biblical today, another matzah so that you can do your murder. Uh, don't do some uh, matzah. No, because if you do the same matzah, <laughs> then if you only eat matzah with murder, then the murder flavor cancels your matzah and you didn't do your matzah properly. So you have to eat matzah first for the biblical mitzvah. And then Hillel would say, you got to do now again murder. You have to do murder. But you have to do murder the way I used to do it in temple times, which means you got to eat murder again with matzah. <laughs> so matzah twice now. Once alone for the biblical mitzvah, and another time you're eating matzah, not for the matzah's sake, but for the maror's sake. Okay? But, yutches. 18. Yeah. So right now, what? It's following? Getting well. <laughs> it's, it's what, but what are we learning here? We're learning <laughs> true, the way... that the koirach, the, the sandwich koirach, is actually really to fulfill the mitzvah of maror. It's not about, it's not just remembering the hill to do it. But according to Hillel, if you want to eat marah the way the sages told you to, you have to eat it with matzah. So we're eating the, sound, the matzah twice, but the second time we're not eating it for the sake of matzah. 
so we're eating it in order to fulfill the murder obligation according to Hillel. Okay, but now, so why are we eating a murder? So if so, we should only have matzah and then sandwich. Why are we eating murder plain in the middle? Just go from matzah straight to sandwich. Why are we having murder in the middle? So let's see. Yudches. Because Hillel's friends, his colleagues, disagree with him, and they say, You don't have to mix it. Not in the biblical, uh, not in the biblical way, when the base Mitzvah is standing, according to them, you don't have to mix it ever, not even when the base Mitzvah is here, and not even when you have a Karm Pesach, according to the other people, not Hillel. And therefore, even today, when you want to eat Mara the way they used to, you don't have to put it together. Okay? And according to their opinion, if you eat the matzah alone to fulfill your biblical commandment, and afterwards, and then you eat a mara in a sandwich, you didn't do the mara properly. Why? So listen to this. Ready? Mm-hmm. Listen to this. This is a new information that we didn't get from the Gemara yet. Okay. So according to, let's, let's get this clear. According to Hillel, all you need to do is eat matzah for the biblical mitzvah, and then eat a sandwich for the rabbinic mitzvah. Why? Because that's how they used to eat it then. Okay. According to the other opinion, you have to eat matzah for the biblical mitzvah. Good. How do you eat the murder? How do you eat the murder according to other opinions? With matzah or without matzah? Normally. Okay. So matzah. according to them, in the basement this time, you don't have to do it together, but you could do it together. So why not nowadays also you could do it together? Why do I have to eat it separate? If I was able to do it then, even though I didn't have to, I should be able to do it now, even though I don't have to. This explains, no, 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 you have to eat it separate. Why? Once you ate matzah for your biblical commandment, when you eat the other matzah in the sandwich, it's only optional, because you already did the mitzvah of matzah. Right? The aim of shum mitzvah lefi frame, and therefore the mitzvah, the matzah that you're eating with a sandwich, if you're not of Hillel's opinion, has no mitzvah, not biblical, not rabbinic. Because the rabbinic mitzvah doesn't need matzah for a marar. The biblical mitzvah you already did. Then the matzah is ruining the marar flavor. You see, here's what happens anything that's in the lower obligation ruins the flavor of a higher obligation. So if you have matzah, which is biblical, and marar that's rabbinic, the rabbinic, and you eat it together, the rabbinic mara will ruin the matzah flavor. Okay. Now, if I ate matzah, that's biblical, so that's off table. All I have left now is mara, and mara is rabbinic. According to Hillel, you want to do this, you have to have it with matzah. Very good. But according to the other opinion, do you have to have matzah? No. Because you didn't have to have matzah in the base of this time, so you don't have to have matzah now to do the mara. So what happens if I don't have to do matzah, but I put matzah anyway? Now I took matzah, which is only optional, and put it into a rabbinic mitzvah, and I ruin the flavor of the marar. So according to the sages who disagree with Hillel, if you want to do the marar nowadays, you can't put matzah together with it. But according to Hillel, if you want to do marar nowadays, you have to put matzah with it. So what do I do? All three. Matzah, marar, and then together. <laughs> Follow? Continue. But according to Hillel, according to Hillel, the matzah that you're putting in the sandwich with marar is a rabbinic mitzvah. Because that's how you have to do it. And therefore, in Mbatla's time of therefore the matzah, according to Hillel, in your sandwich, doesn't ruin your marar flavor in your sandwich. Because according to Hillel, both the matzah and the marar in the sandwich are both equally rabbinic mitzvah. And they're each the same as the other. And therefore, they don't cancel each other out. And now that the halacha doesn't fall, the halacha wasn't settled, not like Hillel, that you have to have a sandwich in this in the basement this time. But like and not according to his friends, which say you could if you want to. And the difference is nowadays, when matzah biblical is eaten alone, the the, the mara rabbinic, according to the according to Hillel, you have to have mara for that rabbinic matzah, that rabbinic mara. And if the matzah and mara are equal rabbinic, no problem. According to the sages, mara is rabbinic. You don't have to have matzah if you want to. Well, then you're taking matzah that's optional and canceling the flavor of your rabbinic, which is which is rabbinic obligation. So therefore, Sarah Adam, a person has to You gotta eat matzah alone without marar. You make a bracha, thank you, Hashem, for the mitzvah of eating matzah. 
al achilas matzah, eating matzah. Why? Because I assume, because you eat this matzah alone, you eat the chavasim and the Torah, you fulfill the biblical obligation. Even according to Hillel, you have to have the matzah alone to fulfill the obligation. <coughs> Excuse me. Bach, I got an afterwards. So the shiyoyach, because I smarar, will vad, below matzah. Then you have to eat the moror alone without matzah. And you make a bracha, Allah chilas moror. Thank you, Hashem, for the mitzvah of eating moror. Because I assume when you eat this portion of marar alone, who yoytzi de chavis marar, the feed of echavedov, you're eating marar according to the opinion of the friends of Hillel, who say, don't put matzah in there, because if you put matzah, you're taking an optional thing and canceling the obligation of the marar. Ach, kach, and afterwards, yich, kazais matzah, ukazais marar, take a portion of matzah and marar, put them together in your kairach sandwich, vijoyichlam biyachat, and eat it together, zeichel mikdash kehillel, to do it the way Hillel says you have to do it, which is to put them together, because that's how he used to do it in the Beit Zemikdash time. You can't make a bracha on the sandwich. You can't make the bracha of matzah, because you already did that mitzvah. And you can't even make the bracha of marar, even according to Hillel. Why? Because maybe the halacha follows Hillel's friends, and if that's the case, you already did marar before when you ate it. There's no mitzvah in that thing. Even according to Hillel, which says that you, in order to fulfill the mitzvah of rabbinic marah today, you have to have the matzah, the bracha you made on the marah first will cover your karach also. So now we're learning like this. When you make bracha on the matzah, you're doing it for the matzah. When you make bracha on marah, you're not just doing it for the marah, you're doing it for the marah and the sandwich. Because according to the sages, you're fulfilling your marah when you eat the marah alone. According to Hillel, you're fulfilling the mitzvah when you eat it with the, with the matzah. So you're making one bracha for the marah and the kardach. And that's why he says, V'lachem therefore, Zorachli you got to be very careful. Shaloi la'asiyat b'davar, you have to make sure, don't speak. She'enim in asuda, if it's not connected to a meal, right? Once you make a bracha, you can't talk about anything else until you do the thing you make a bracha, made a bracha on. When you wash, from Moitzi, we don't talk until we eat the bread. So once you make the bracha, Allah chilas matzah, that bracha is going to extend all the way to your kairach. So you can't talk from there until you're done the kairach. And therefore, don't speak. Once you make the bracha on the chilas matzah, don't speak until you eat that sandwich. So eat matzah, quiet. Butter, quiet, sandwich, and I can talk. Why? So that the bracha of matzah and the bracha of maror should extend to your sandwich according to Hillel, which you have to have the sandwich. But if you did speak, don't make a new bracha. Because maybe you already fulfilled your obligation when you made the bracha on maror. And if you act, and if you make another bracha, it might be a wasted bracha. Okay? What do they use for maror in those days? The same things we use today. You keep you keep on coming back to that question. And I'll put it aside. When we get to the discussion of murder, we're going to go through the Gemara and tell us different op opinions for murder, different options for murder. But they would have had the same thing we do. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we're going to stop over here. And we're going to give us more halachas tomorrow about what happens if you accidentally talk after you make a mozi. And we're going to talk also about more halachas about the sandwich, whether you should lean or not, and uh, how you have to eat it. More halachas coming up about the sandwich. But now we have a good uh, overview of the Gemara and understanding when the Gemara said at the end that because we don't know if the halachas like Hillel and we don't know if the halachas like the sage, like the others, why you have to do both? Why you have to do both? Because you don't know which halacha, who we follow. Now we have a good reason why. To please of, both of them. But but but, but to understand why that is. Because before the Altar spoke to us, we could have said, well, eat the matzah alone, and then eat the matzah together with murder, and you fulfill your obligation according to everybody. Because even the people who say um that in the base of time, you don't have to mix it, but you're allowed to mix it. Not Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan says, you know, you weren't allowed to mix it. But the Gemara rejected Rabbi Yechonon, which means even according to the people who disagreed with Hillel, they would have said, you're allowed to mix them together. So why not just have matzah 
and then I'm matzah and mar together. And now we're, now we understand why. Because if you do that, then according to the people who say you don't have to put the matzah and mar together, then the mara you're introducing at your sandwich is an optional mara. And that optional mara is going to ruin the flavor of your obligation of mara. The optional matzah is going to ruin your flavor of your obligation of mara. And if you have to do all three, matzah alone, mara alone, and then the sandwich to do the mara like Hillel says. Okay, more halachas on the, on the sandwich coming tomorrow. God willing, have a wonderful day, everybody.